Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Munted Monthly. Uh, take two, unfortunately. It seems that um, if you don't hit go live in the YouTube portal, it doesn't work. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, right, so Munted Monthly, it is a live show. I'm going to do this every single month. Uh, the channel is TechFurb, if you didn't know. Uh, and I've wanted to do this for a very long time since so I actually started the channel way back in 2016 and I just I haven't had a chance to do anything with it yet so uh, yeah that's the reality of what's going on um, and I think we should dive into the intro Hi. Absolutely. I know it's going to I've just changed the bitrate settings, I'm sorry. It's uh, not perfect. So, what is going on with the channel? Um, effectively, effectively, uh, I've been on a hiatus for almost a year now. Um, there has been videos getting published, but very infrequently. Uh, I think I actually checked back and I'm pretty sure I published less than 10 videos in the last... 12 months, which for me is a very big disappointment. Um, I don't like publishing that little, uh, and it's time to revamp the channel and, and start producing more content again. So, the reasons why I've dialed back the content, um, partially I started doing uh, media duties for the Queensland Rally Championship, um, so that's a state level, um, a, a car rally sort of championship. Um, I was doing about, I think I ended up doing about eight events last year. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's eight weekends of filming, uh, plus scrutineering for those events. So that's another six, eight weeks on top. So it's 16 weeks of, um, of filming or weekends of filming. Uh, and then from there, you've also got the editing time. So it did take up a lot of my time. Um, so going forward into this year, because I am do still doing the media for the championship, I enjoyed it a lot last year, so we're going to go and do it again. Um, but this year we'll be dropping scrutineering, which means that I get, uh, you know, half the weekends back that I was losing. Um, it also reduces my editing workload. Uh, I've also gotten a lot more efficient with editing. Um, you'd, you'd think that it happened over a year. Uh, and the other reason why a lot of tech fan videos haven't been getting made is um, my job which I'm no longer in thankfully I've, I've gotten a new job and I'm very happy in that new job um, the old job just it drained a lot of energy out of me um, which you know that's a job that's what you got to do it's fine you got to do it for a livelihood um, but for me it was getting home from work at seven o'clock at night um, I've got to eat I've got to spend time with my family um, and you know, that adds up, um, it gets to nine o'clock at night and you know what? I was, I was pretty tired. Um, I didn't have the energy to do it. Uh, hence why not as many videos were getting made because to make a tech video, to be honest with you, from start to finish the process can be anywhere from 10 to 30 hours. On average, you're looking at 20 hours per project. Um, if you break that down over a single weekend, that is a 10 hour day, two days in a row. Now you have to remember, I only get two days off a week. So if I do two 10 hour days, I have to then go back to work the next day and work another eight, five, eight hour days in consecutive in concession. You can, you can sort of see um, the burnout process happening there. And the other reason why was, you know, it was just a job that didn't suit me very well um, and it required a lot more energy than what um, a job should. So going to the new job I'm in now, um, certainly still working hard, um, but it's a job I come home from and I have a lot of energy still. It's not a, a, a mentally exhausting job. It's um, quite rewarding. I enjoy it a lot. Um, and that means that when I get home, I have the energy to do the tech fur videos again. That's why you've been seeing a bit of a push from me. 
um, to try and get content out uh, because the reality is I haven't been getting content out. So um, that's the, the core crux of what's going on uh, with the channel as to why there's not been a lot of videos. Um, and I guess, you know, this is, this is going to be a long uh, bit of a ramble. It is a live stream. Um, and let's talk about the channel direction. So that's what's been happening. That's my excuse. Um, you can make your own mind up whether it's valid or not. Uh, going forward this year, I intend to be doing a monthly live stream. This live stream once a month, every Thursday, uh, first Thursday of the month. Then we're going to try and do a video per week. We'll see how that goes. It may have to dial back to once a fortnight. Um, but I'm going to try and structure the content in such a way that I have a big project week one week. The next week is an easy video that I can punt out in less than 10 hours. Um, you know, that, and that's sort of the reality of how you got to do it because, again, full time job, you know, still got to spend time with your family, all that sort of stuff. Um, you can't just go 100% on YouTube. I'm not full-time on YouTube, like, unlike others um, who are lucky enough to be full-time. Um, and that just means that I can't produce the same amount of content. Uh, that That's how it goes. And, you know, I've got a lot of advice that I can give you if you're wanting to start a tech channel or even a YouTube channel in general. Um, I can't give you advice on how to start a beauty channel, but I can tell you how making a YouTube channel works. Um, and... Yeah, so going forward, we're going to try and do that. So monthly live stream once a month, um, video once a week. Uh, the core content has not changed. Um, I actually may have a little bit more cash flow going forward, which means that I can possibly put that into the channel. But you know, I, I, this is a hobby. Um, it's not a business, so no guarantees there. Um, so the content will stay on older tech. Um, I actually have a lot of older tech now. Um, I have made it my business to slowly but surely collect uh, CPUs over time. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna drop this stream down a little bit because uh, it seems like it's just sort of stuttering a little bit on the other end. see a little bit of a drop in the quality because I was streaming at 20 megabit we're going down to 10 megabit now so um, okay oh uh, how's the audio is the audio okay can I perfect yep that's fine cool awesome okay so content types going forward um, I was talking about uh, I've made it my business to collect a lot of CPUs um, and I have done that so I now have uh, generations one to four of Intel uh, Core i series, which means uh, not a full collection, but most for the most part, we've got a i3, i5. We have an i5 in every single generation. Um, we have, I'm pretty sure we actually have an i3 in every single generation as well. Um, we only have a second and a third gen i7, um, so 2600 and 3770. Um, in terms of RAM, I have a lot of four gig DIMMs available now, so I can actually build out more than one build at a time. Uh, motherboards, we also have every single Intel generation from uh, LGA 775, which is the Core 2 era, right up until the 1150 platform, which is uh, Gen 4 Core i series, so you uh, 40, 4440s and that sort of stuff. Um, on the AMD side, we've got the AMD, uh, we've got the AM2, AM3, and AM4 platforms. Uh, there is an FM2, which I intend to do a video on. That'll be a little interesting one. Um, it is a, a interesting socket. It's probably not very useful now, but um, you know, I wouldn't mind doing some content on it. Uh, then, in terms of graphics cards, that is something we need to build out. Um, graphics cards are not something that I've been able to get my hands on cheap or free or easily or hand-me-down or whatever 
Um, people just don't get rid of graphics cards. They they hang on to them for the life of the card, which kind of makes sense. You have a it's the thing that allows you to play games. So people want to play games. They're not going to give up their graphics card. Um, that's just how it is. So my hope is to be able to start purchasing a couple of newer generations because all of my cards are now unfortunately on the older um, Nvidia side. They're the 10 series and AMD side. They're the RX series. So. Um, in the graphics card department, I'm able to use a RX 480, uh, GTX 1050 Ti. I don't have my 1050 anymore. I, I have um, moved that on because it was becoming a bit redundant with the 1050 Ti there. Um, I've also got the 1080 there. Uh, and from memory, that is actually it. Yeah, I've got, I think I've got a six, uh, GTX 670 sitting in my uh, editing rig. But the idea of the 670 was for the editing rig as a permanent um, fixture, so you won't see that in benchmarks. Um, so going forward this year, uh, I'm going to see how the market develops. A part of me wants to try and get a 16 series GTX card. Uh, so potentially a 1650 Super, um, maybe a 1660 Super, maybe an RTX 2060. Um, they're all nice to have, but again, it, it, it does cost serious money when you start looking at those higher end cards. Um, I could get an RX 580 or 570, but I've already got a 480. And while, yes, the 480 is no longer sold, the reality is it's basically a RX 580 and a 570 is not far off it. So it gives you that sort of relative AMD performance. So there's no sense in, um, in, in getting a newer card when it has the same performance. So, um, and... Yeah, that's the hardware side. Power supplies I'm probably lacking a little bit. I've got enough to do videos here and there, but I haven't got enough to just make permanent systems with them. Um, and I'm probably going to need to stock up on SSDs and hard drives as well. So that's kind of where that we're at in terms of stock for the channel. We've got enough to make content. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that. Because if you're a tech channel, and or you're wanting to start a tech channel, a lot of people make the mistake of coming into this thing looking at the Linus tech tips. That's the reality. They look at Linus and they go, I want to do that. And they get very frustrated when they realize how hard it is to make the content that Linus makes because you need access to new hardware all the time. Um, and I can tell you, you can't go sinking $400, $500 to make a video every single week on a new piece of hardware. It just doesn't work. Um, one thing I did try initially when I started the channel, um, I tried to get hardware, make a video on it, flip the hardware. Didn't work so well. Um, you tend to buy hardware and then you tend to lose a fair bit of money on that hardware. So um, I thankfully I didn't make the mistake of buying brand new hardware and then trying to flip it and losing like $100 on the value straight um, straight off the bat um, but second hand hardware I did make that mistake thinking that I could get something and flip it for around the same price doesn't work that way it turns out that uh, you end up sitting on um, hardware for months waiting to sell it if you try and sell it at the price that you bought it for because in, in Australia where I am um, people overcharge so that's the reality of the market in Australia it makes it hard um, so the only option I've had is to rely on the generosity of others, to rely on e-waste bins getting filled um, and just generally find ways to get hardware for cheap and not sell that hardware. So my policy is now, if I have uh, get my hands on say a new CPU, I don't have that CPU like that particular model, um, I will keep that CPU indefinitely even if I never make a video on it um, it's a potential video so why would I get rid of it so um, if you're thinking of starting a tech channel this is the approach that you kind of have to go with um, and yeah that's that's um, the real use a lower bit rate oh, YouTube you horrible horrible person I've, I've gotten a very very good internet connection now and I like using that very good internet connection. How about eight megabit? Is that enough to make you happy? There we go, eight megabit. 
Alright, surely you guys got 8 megabit down. So, uh, if you've got questions for me, pop, in, pop them in the chat as well. Um, it is a live stream, this isn't just a talking headpiece, this is, this is an interactive video. So, you know, you want to you wanna talk to me, you can post in the, um, the chat on the right hand side. Um, yeah, so, kind of rambling a bit here, but, uh, yeah, tech is hard when you do a YouTube channel. So, the other thing I've learnt, um, is you can't do what other people do. And that's not just in terms of content, that's in terms of everything. You can't look at a channel and go, oh, they're using a Sony, flip, I don't know my Sony's, but an FS something or other, like a, a three or four thousand dollar camera, you look at that and go, oh, I need one of those. No, you don't. You really don't. This this video is being recorded on an $800 Handycam right now. It is an expensive purchase to me, um, but in terms of cameras, it's not expensive. It's a 4K camera. It does everything I need to do. Um, sure, you watch my video, you compare it to a big tech tuber with 200,000 subscribers, their picture quality is gonna look better. Um, I can't do anything about that, but I don't have their budget. And you have to stick to your budget. If your budget is forces you to use your flipping iPhone or Android phone or whatever, so be it. Use your phone. Um, use whatever you can to make content. And if you find success, you find a way to get a bit of money or a bit of capital, maybe invest in a camera. Um, in terms of microphones, you don't need anything special. This mic here on the desk, that's a, like a, you can buy that for like 80, 90 bucks Australian um, from pretty much any retail. It's a blue snowball. Um, it is a USB microphone, so obviously not applicable in all cases, but in this particular one for live streaming, it's great. Does the job. Um, you might be hearing a lot of echo. That's not the result of the microphone. That is the result of this room not being sound treated. Um, so things like that. The, the mic on top of the camera, which I'm not currently using, but is in pretty much every tech for video, that's what gets featured. It's a Rode, mod, uh, Rode Video Micro. It's a, it's a video, I think it's Video Micro, they call it. Um, it's a, it's not a powered microphone, so it's, um, which means it's powered off the, um, the auxiliary jack on the camera. Um, and it does the job. I, I can't complain about it. I use it for all of the rally footage that I make. Um, no one has said to me, oh, maybe the audio quality can improve because there's no need to, it does the job. Um, that microphone, again, 70, 80 bucks, pretty much any Australian re Aussie retailer. Um, if you're over in the US or you're in you know, a different country, it's gonna be cheaper, um, it's gonna be more affordable, it's gonna be more accessible. So, you know, if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, don't spend a fortune. Um, that's how it is. Um, let's see, so, alright, that's that's my mind dump. So, this show, what are we going to do on this show? Um, I want this to be a mixture of news, um, opinion pieces, so, for example, uh, I did a build, which is currently off camera, um, I did post about it on social media, uh, was building a, uh, a, oh, I've had a minimal one here. A sim racing rig, so you know your, your racing wheels and that sort of stuff. Um, building a rig to run one of those. Um, they're going to run things like dirt rally and all the sort of simmy sort of games. Um, he is actually a rally driver in real life, drives a real rally car, um, and he just wanted to get the sim for one, a bit of fun, and two, you know, he gets to spend no time in the rally car. He only like when you go rallying in real life, you get to do maybe four, five, six events a year if you're really lucky. Um, in his particular case, he's looking at more like three to a good year is four in his case. So it really depends. Um, and the reality is, you know, this is a, it's not the same thing, but it's a bit of fun and, um, he can get a, a, something out of it as well. And for his driving technique and different things, it's, it makes sense to me as well. Having a, my own racing rig and having used one for years and years and years, um, you can apply some of that sort of. It's not going to make you a fast racing driver. It's not going to make you an amazing race driver. It doesn't mean you can get straight into a race car and drive fast. Um, it means that you understand how canister works and different things like that. Like there's just the basic core principles. You can sort of figure it out on that sort of thing. So um, anyway, sort of getting sidetracked. That's what the build was about. Uh, and 
I rushed into it thinking, hey, I've got a spare old Lenovo towel lying around that has an i7 sitting in it. Um, I've been lucky enough to get my hands on a couple of towers that have got um, decent processors in them. Uh, so this one had an old i7-2600. Um, I was keeping it around in case I ever needed to make a video with it or, you know, needed hardware for, I don't know, for example, this um, this streaming rig is an i7-2600K. Uh, sorry, i7-2600, non-K, sorry. Uh, not, not the overclockable one. Um, it's just an OEM build uh, that's been repurposed into a streaming rig. Um, and yeah, for him, I was like, all right, let's get this Lenovo to work. Um, we went on to Umart. Uh, we... You know, we needed an SSD, we needed a hard drive because you can't use second hand, well you can use second hand storage but it's not advisable, especially when it's not um, it's not your rig, when you're giving it to someone, make sure that you're getting them to buy new hard drives SSDs, otherwise they're just going to have a bad time. Um, we also wanted a half decent graphics card, um, so you know, he could turn up graphical fidelity on the, on the racing sim. Um, and for that purpose, um, we wanted to keep it within budget constraints. Um, and we managed to find an RX 480, 8 gig, for 230 Australian dollars. Um, it was on a sale at Umart, and we snapped it up. Um, and I didn't think, I didn't process in my head the consequence of doing that, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and we also got a power supply, 600 watt, because it needed a power supply. So, we got all the parts, um, well, he sends me the money to buy the parts, I buy the parts, whatever. Anyway, get the parts here, start doing the video, start doing the build. Um, the build went flawlessly. I've never built an OEM system, uh, well, converted an OEM system into a gaming rig so easily. It took me like 30 minutes. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I, I even walked out and I said to Mel, that was too easy. Nothing went wrong. Something's up. Sure enough, sure enough, something was up. I go to fire it up for the first time, I get no display out. I go, huh, that's odd. Managed to catch it on camera too, because I fully expected it to work. Um, mistake number one, fully expected it to work. I'll never learn, I'll never learn that Murphy hates me. Um, sure enough, doesn't boot, go through my troubleshooting process, um, at that time as well, it was pretty late at night, so I had to go to bed, so I went to bed, had another go at it the next day, and was like, oh, that's right, AMD's, um, since the RX 400 series no longer supports uh, traditional um, BIOSes, uh, so you've got to use a UEFI BIOS now, you can't use a legacy BIOS, um, and I was like, oh crap, oh, that's right, okay. I was like, all right, that's fine. Let's update the BIOS. So take out the RX 580, install Windows on the SSD, boot into Windows, all that stuff. Um, download the latest BIOS off the Lenovo site, flash the BIOS. Great, fantastic. Set up the cameras, set up the lights, everything's ready to go. Throw the graphics card back in, do my bit of filming, turn it on, bloody black screen again. And I was like, ah, oh, why? So I went through the troubleshooting process and eventually I realized that it just wasn't going to work. Um, I even got to the point of like plugging in uh, just another random graphics card. It wasn't a high-end graphics card, but just to validate it wasn't PCI slot or something silly like that. But yeah, the, the, the 580 wouldn't take with the um, Lenovo system. So you'll hear a rant about me. Hear a rant about that in the video. Um, very entertaining. My um, suffering, I hope it entertains you very much because I hate my suffering and I wish it would end. First of all, problem. Anyway, besides the point. So, things like that. I can never get to talk about them in detail on videos. Um, and I guess that's probably... We can, we can talk about this topic. This can be an opinion piece. So, you see a lot of YouTubers out there. Um, I'm not going to pick on Tech Yes City, um, if you guys know who he is. Um, I don't know uh, the guy that does it, Brian, I think he calls himself. I don't know him personally, and I've never met the guy. Um, but he's a very strong advocate of building a, a gaming rig out of second-hand parts. Um, and I'm going to have to say that I'm starting to disagree with him on that. Um, every single time I have tried 
to do an OEM PC conversion. It does not matter what brand it is. It just has issues that are either very difficult to resolve or can't be resolved. And sure enough, nine out of 10 times I've managed to push through and get it to work. It's been a lot of time, a lot of effort. But hey, you know, if um, for argument's sake, you, it costs you $300 and you get an awesome 1080p gaming rig that crushes everything on ultra settings, sure, it's worth it. The problem is, no one ever talks about this. You have to have a level of expertise to do that. I strongly discourage anyone that is brand new to computing, they've never built a computer in their life, I would strongly discourage you from building second hand because you just have issues and you usually have to troubleshoot stuff. You've got to have stuff lying around to troubleshoot it with. Um, and sure, when you're someone like me, I mean, you've got friggin' gazillion parts sitting around. It's, it's not hard for me to push my way through something. So sure, I'm going to keep making videos on doing that sort of stuff. But I'm no longer... Um, as of this last video I've done, I'm no longer advocating that you buy a second-hand OEM PC and turn it into a gaming machine because it's just, it's not worth the headache. Um, having said that, there's another side to the second-hand market and again, it's, it's region-based. Um, the other side to the market is you buy used gaming hardware. So... In the case of resolving this sim rig, the way I've solved the problem is I was lucky enough to have a spare socket 1155 motherboard sitting around um, that, you know, wasn't an OEM piece of crap. It was like a legitimate, um, I think it's an ASUS board. And I was able to build a system with that. Happy days. Um, lucky enough to have the spare parts around. But if that was my money tied up in that Lenovo system, and I had just spent every single freaking penny I had, I would be utterly screwed. And for me, I can't recommend that. I, I just, I can't recommend that if you're someone who doesn't know much about computers, you, you've built less than one or two computers in your lifetime, don't do it, man, it's not worth it. Unless you, you want to do it as a project, you want to burn your money on it, and you don't care if it works, go for your life. Um, but don't do it expecting it to work because the reality is it doesn't just work. Um, you can't just plug stuff in and it, it, it doesn't just work. So yeah, opinion piece on that, uh, rant piece on that. Um, if you are someone that has good technical knowledge or you've got spare parts lying around and you want to make yourself a cheap gaming rig, the OEM systems that I've come across that do work for the conversion are pretty much only Dell, and even then it's a subsection of Dell. So uh, I know that a second generation uh, Intel Core i series Optiplex um, can be converted, um, like you can, to the point where you can actually take the motherboard out of the case and put it in something else and get it to work. Requires a bit of hacking to get it done, but it can be done. Um, and that's an Optiplex uh, 390, 790, and 990. Maybe there's a couple of different variants, but it goes X90, um, Dell Optiplex X90. Uh, they can do the conversions. Um, the CPUs that, and this is another caveat, you can't, it's a socket 1155 that doesn't take a third generation processor like to me that's just mind-boggling it only supports one generation and that's because intel in their infinite actually no sorry dell in their prickery um would not update the biases to support the new generation hardware because they want you to spend more money with them and buy more hardware because oems um i truly hate them i really do um they had their place in business world but i just uh yeah I, I've, I've grown to dislike them severely over time um so that's one generation that will work another generation that will work is a dell optiplex 30 uh x zero series so 3010 uh 70 oh sorry no a, a, a number zero one zero dell optiplex so 3010 
70, 10, 90, 10, um, they can also be converted uh, and they run Intel third generation processors. Not backwards compatible with um, second generation processors, I don't believe, from memory either. So that's fantastic. You can't just put in an i7 2600 in it to replace your crappy i3. Um, anyway, whatever. That's a Dell. They can do whatever they want. Um, it's an OEM. Um, yeah, so that's the pain of OEMs. Don't use them um, for your gaming rigs because they suck. Um, if you're a business, use them. Please use them because they have warranties and different things. Um, the, you know, horses for courses. Um, the OEM horse is not rent, meant to run on the gaming course. Um, that's that's the reality of it. They're meant for the enterprise and for businesses, um, and maybe mums and pops that uh, don't even know that you can play games on a PC. That's that's probably who it's best for. So that's my rant about OEM. So uh, what other information can I relay to you guys? Um, oh, I suppose I should probably weigh in on the the whole PC market thing right now with the the um, the well, how to steam from games next to say the human malware that's going around. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, I've seen a jump in SSDs uh, in pricing that seemed to be before the um, outbreak happened. Um, but yeah, I think the predictions that we're probably going to go back into higher pricing for computer parts is probably going to be a reality. Um, not because people are going to go out buying them because it's computer hardware and, you know, people buy computer hardware when they need computer hardware. Um, but what will happen is there will just be factories that are not opening for maybe a month, maybe two months. That's hundreds of thousands of um, stock that can't be produced. That's just that's just stock that will be lost forever. Um, and at some point it's gonna hit a supply chain and once it does, well, we're just gonna start paying more for computer parts and not just computer parts. But um, the other question that goes around is, should you freak out and go out and buy hardware? Probably not, don't do that. <laughs> it's, um, on a side note though, on, a, on a, um, a thought that's probably not been put in, uh, if you're hanging on to an old motherboard or CPU or some sort of spare part lying around that you're thinking of selling, maybe just hang on to it for a month and see what the PC market does. Because what might happen, uh, and this happened when the um, the cryptocurrency mining craze went on, the price of graphics cards back then uh, in the new market skyrocketed, um, and consequentially the used market skyrocketed in price. So all of a sudden you could... S like, um, I remember at one point I'd bought my RX 480 literally a month before the prices went up. So I bought my RX 480 for 400 Australian dollars. I checked an Anytailer a month or two later and it was $800. So I could actually flip that graphics card at the time for a profit, um, but uh, I needed it, so I didn't. <laughs> but um, for you, you know, you're sitting on a second hand bit of hardware, maybe just wait a little bit. Um, because what might happen is the price of building a new computer could go back through the roof um, and all of a sudden the used market becomes a seller's market again as opposed to um, a buyer's market although having said that in Australia at the moment from what I can tell it's a bit of a buyer's a uh, bit of a seller's market anyway um, but around the rest of the world hey if you're in a buyer's market um, it might become a seller's market so um, congratulations to you who owns something and will get money from it. Um, flip side of that, uh, if you're someone who needs hardware um, and you're intending to purchase it or need to purchase it sooner rather than later, um, now might be the time to do it. Um, I remember actually when I was very young, uh, the global financial crisis hit in 2008 and um, back then uh, what had happened was the I'd, I'd been working um, like an after school job I was like 16 no I was 15 at the time I'd been working an after school job 
saving up money and getting paid like eight dollars an hour or something horrible that's how much you got paid back like that was the award wage back then like that was acceptable um i couldn't imagine paying someone that amount of money now but um that's that's what i got paid um, for my after school job um eight bucks an hour i saved and saved and saved for six months and this was back when the core two duos were a thing um i had eyed off i was, I was saving up a thousand dollars wanted to buy a computer for a thousand dollars and i saved my ass off and the intel core two duo e8400 at the time um for reference you're probably thinking uh like a modern I'd want to say it was probably a Ryzen 7 3700X equivalent in today, sort of in today's terms, or uh, on the Intel side, probably an i7 8700, uh, what are they on now, 9700K. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a pretty high product, high tier product, and I could actually afford it in my $1,000 budget. Um, and I was gonna get, I'm pretty sure it was two gig of RAM at the time, or four gig. Maybe it was four gig. Anyway, I had this awesome spec. I was gonna get like a, a 9600 GT, and like it was a good, solid mid-range gaming tower for the time. Um, and I'd saved up all my money, and I was like a month or two away, and global financial crisis hit. I was a kid. I had no idea what the global financial crisis was. Um, I understand it now, but I didn't understand it back then. And I remember just like checking the used market, like, yeah, I'm gonna buy my computer now. Why can't I buy my computer now? Why is it so expensive? The computer that had cost me, would have cost me $1,000 two months before had all of a sudden skyrocketed to about $1,600 in the space of two months. I was crushed, <laughs> it sucked. Um, so, I had to buy a computer, uh, and I bought a Dell, uh, not a Dell, sorry, I bought a, um, it was an Intel Pentium Dual Core E5200. It wasn't even a Core 2 Duo, I couldn't afford a Core 2 Duo, it sucked so much. Um, but I bought the E5200, um, it had 2 gig of RAM, uh, one stick of um, 2 gig of RAM I might add. Uh, it was 800 megahertz DDR2. Um, motherboard was like a G31 so it's like a H310 in today's sort of era um, and oh man what else it was like a terabyte hard drive it was a terabyte hard drive this was back when a terabyte was a big deal um, so it did have a terabyte hard drive that was cool um, and it had a NVIDIA GeForce 9500 GT uh, a 512 megabyte graphics card. Can you imagine using that today? It would not run anything. Um, but I bought it. This was in 2008, end of 2008. Um, and yeah, I remember being so gutted at the time that that's all I could afford, but I may do. Um, but this is the difference between, you know, this is what, 12 years ago and today. Back then, you could overclock any processor from Intel or AMD because they had locked multipliers so the overclocking that we know today is um, an unlocked multiplier um, but back then what you used to do was you had what was called the front side bus um, a lot of you who have been in tech will know this and be like why are you telling me this there's kids that are born today that won't have been alive when the front side bus was deprecated in 2009 um, yeah, had a front side bus, uh, and I overclocked my 2.5 gigahertz dual core CPU on my entry level budget AF cheap crappy motherboard. It was overclocked to 3.75 gigahertz all the time, 24 seven. That was its 24 seven overclock. If I didn't do a 24 seven overclock, I could hit four gigahertz on a 2.5 gigahertz chip. That's a over a 50% overclock and it was a hundred dollar CPU um, it destroyed any stock core 2 um, it, it was awesome uh, they were really good days to, to be into computing actually it was you could buy the budget hardware and um, you used to rock up to a LAN you could rock up to a LAN with like your cheap ass crappy gaming computer overclocked to within an inch of its life and it would just smash these um, these kids that had like $2,000 gaming rigs because they didn't know how to overclock 
Um, so yeah, that was awesome. I remember those days. That was freaking cool. Um, yeah. Oh, who we got here? Hicksnort, what's up? What's up, bro? Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying my um, ranting, rambling session. Um, yeah, I few guys haven't been tuned in for a while. Um, this is a monthly show. Uh, first episode, I haven't got a lot of news topics this time because uh, I had the genius idea to live stream three days ago. So um, I didn't really process in my head that I would probably need to do a lot more prep than what I've done. Um, hence why you're getting Kevin, the tech guy, telling his stories because he's old. So that's what's up. Um, yeah, so that was that was my old gaming computer. Um, this was pre the Core i5s. And I remember when they came out, it was like <clears throat> unreal. You could buy a quad core in them like for two hundred or three hundred dollars or whatever it was back then. Freaking awesome! Um, my mate had one. It was it was it was sick. Um, absolutely destroyed my little Pentium dual core thing. But anyway, um, yeah, that was the old days of computing, man. So that's that's how long I've been in the game for. That's when I built my first computer. Um, and that thing ended up getting a motherboard change. I never changed the CPU, ironically. I probably should have changed the CPU, but I never did. Um, ended up getting 6 gig of RAM in it. A graphics card never got changed. Um, yeah, that was the old days of things. I was doing like programming in high school, and that was a good old days, man. That was, that was a long time ago. Um, where was I going with this story? I forget. I've forgotten where I was going with this story. Anyway, doesn't matter. So, guys, in the chat, have you got any questions for me? Um, I'm here on streaming. I've scheduled an hour and a half for this stream. Um, so if you've got any questions for me, you know, pop them in the chat. Let's talk about them. So, um, yeah. Uh, what other things that are sort of going on? Oh, that's right. That's how I got into this discussion. That's right. That's how I got off topic. Um... PC parts pricing. So that's my story. Um, I waited too long and ended up not getting the toys that I wanted. So if you can stretch yourself to buy a computer hardware now, buy it now. That's that's where the story's going. Um, yeah. So that that's that's sort of the, my input on that um, sort of news topic at the moment. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, probably, uh, which is getting a bit of attention at the moment, is um, let's talk about Intel versus AMD and uh, where that is at. Um, so, new hardware, I do follow it. Um, I don't make a lot of content on it because it costs money to make that content. But basically, um, I don't know. I think. I had fully expected Intel to have absolutely blasted back at AMD by now, but they just haven't. And um, their 10th gen's around the corner. I'm If it's on 14 nanometers again, man, that's game over. Like, they need to move on from uh, 14 nanometer. This is now, this will be five generations if they do it. Um... And AMD, um, yeah, let's let's talk, let's talk about my Ryzen uh, seven that I bought actually. Um, so I'm coming up to the point now where it's time to upgrade my editing rig. Um, I don't really have a gaming rig. I kind of kind of do, but it's more of just a, a thing with a graphics card in it that can run Fallout. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about the AMD. So. Um, Ryzen 7 1700, three years on. Um, I can tell you, I don't regret buying it because what was available when I did buy it was kind of crap from Intel. Um, if I had have got a 7700K as opposed to my 1700, yeah, it would have sucked. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the 7700K was more expensive than my, um, my Ryzen 5 anyway. Uh, sorry, Ryzen Seven. Um, I don't regret it from a um, from an editing perspective. It's been an awesome CPU, but it is starting to show its age a little. Um, it's definitely performing well in multi-core, in single-threaded 
it's not great. Um, I would probably want a bit more single threaded. Um, but all in all, um, if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel or you do programming or anything where you need computational power, um, get a Ryzen CPU, man. Uh, Ryzen 5 3600, Ryzen 7 3700X. Uh, depending on your budget, go for it, man. Um, but yeah, don't buy it for gaming. <laughs> don't buy my um, Ryzen 7 1700 for gaming. It's a terrible gaming CPU. Um, but that's not what it was for. Not what it was for. Um, and I don't know. I th I think we'll get Ryzen 4000 this year. Um, I don't think it'll be at the start of the year, though. I reckon, given the timeline where they had to stretch out second to well first to second gen was about 15 months second to third was about 15 months so i reckon we're probably going to be looking at november december for 4000 series um yeah yeah i, th I think we would probably so if you're going to buy a cpu um now's the time to buy it um because there's nothing new coming that's worth it the intel 10th gen shit is going to suck <laughs> so um, go out and buy the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 pair it with the graphics card that's mid tier mid, mid upper tier and have fun um, that is the CPU to buy right now if you're wanting anything unless you need an RTX 2080 Super for whatever reason um, then yeah you're probably buying an i7 uh, sorry 9999k or whatever the, the top of range Intel is for gaming um, but yeah um, I don't know, guys. Do you have any questions? Pop them in the chat. Ah, oh, man, this is hard. I need to get a co host. What do we do with a co host? This is a good question. I should rope one of my friends into being a co host that's not camera shy. Maybe Reg. Reg, if you're watching this right now. You need to come on the show, and we need to get you here. Um, we'll need to make more space, but we'll, we need to get you here, and we'll have a long-ass discussion, man. Um, it'll be good. We'll bounce off each other. It'll be friggin' awesome. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know where to go with this show now, guys. I'm running out of rambling things. Um, videos. Let's talk about the rally stuff. I haven't really actually talked a lot about that. Um, so, last year, the year's obviously over. I'm waiting for the first rally to come up in um, a month. And I'm excited. Um, year two, in year one of, of doing it, um, we impressed heavily. Um, the, the sport seems to be growing as a result of the work we're doing. Um... And man, I loved it. Um, some of the, just, yeah, it's awesome. So if you're into rallying, basically when you do media, um, you can pretty much go wherever you want within reason. Obviously you can't stand in a stupid spot. Um, but basically I get to stand on the side of the road with a camera and film a car that screens past me at like 180 some ridiculous kilometer per hour speed. That's just awesome. It's freaking awesome. Um, and it's a great community. Um, it's it's awesome to be involved in. Um, if you ever get a chance to go and watch a car rally, you should totally do it. Um, they're freaking awesome. Usually the spectating's free as well. I don't think it's, um, unless it's a real top tier event, um, the spectating doesn't cost any money. Um, not At least not in the Queensland events. Um, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, so I've been able to travel up to the Whitsundays. Uh, went down towards New South Wales. I do do the WRC every year, but um, missed out on it last year because of the, the bushfires down there. That was, that was horrendous. Um, yeah, yeah. Standing on the side of the road with a camera, man. Um, I loved it. I really did. Uh so if you want to get into that, um, basically it's who you know. So if you want to get into media, filming cars or motorsport or anything like that, basically how you get into it 
is you just sort of hang around, show up to events, um, hang around with a camera actually, you usually hang around at a spectator point with a camera looking sort of serious is a good way to get noticed. Um, and the way I got noticed was I went down to the rally in Coffs in 2018 and I whipped out my camera and went around chasing all the guys on um, what they do, what's called uh, recce or reconnaissance. Um, the drivers will go through in a road car doing basically the speed limit, like 60 k's per hour or whatever. Um, and they drive through the stages right down their pace. And what I was doing is I would figure out where these stages were and I would go to the start control or stop control. So I went to the stop control of one of the stages that I, I just happened to come across it to by chance, actually. I was, I was sort of driving around, figuring it out. And I'd actually figured out that I was going against traffic, so I decided to follow the rally drivers as opposed to getting in their way, annoying them. Um, and I got to the stop control, stopped, pulled out, grabbed out my camera, and um, there happened to be the guy standing there at stop control was... Um, well, he was the head photographer for the, for the Queensland Rally Championship. Uh, so that basically meant um, they were looking for a videographer up here. And he was like, you keen? I went, hell yeah, I'm keen. And um, then from there, I went off, met with the chairman. Um, we had a good discussion. Uh, also, um, with with um, the, the... I won't name her on my stream, um, but, you know... Uh, the lady also um, that helps us with the, with uh, media and planning and she's on the rally panel as well um, and then we went off did our first event the actual first event was pretty bad um, I was very disappointed with the footage we got from that event because we we when I'd done filming um, at a rally event I'd only ever done it from a spectator point I never actually had free reign because what I can do is I've got my media vest on, um, like it's like a high vis vest. I can walk straight past any officials. I can walk straight into stages, and they won't stop me. I can literally go where, anywhere where I want to, um, if as long as I don't stand somewhere stupid. Because if I stand somewhere stupid, well then I'm either a going to get killed by a car, or b I'm going to get asked to never come back again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that there's that. But, um, you know, you apply your common sense and don't see them in stupid places. Um, first rally we did, the footage we got was, nah, it was, yeah, it wasn't great. I wasn't happy with it. The drivers were just happy because someone was there with a video camera filming them. Um, but I was very disappointed um, in, in that first effort. That was, um, yeah, that, that, that sucked. Um, but we did that. Then we went and did our second rally and I started to get my, I was a bit happy with the shots I was getting. Um, but I still hadn't quite worked out how the format of the events were running. And then by the third rally, we were up at the um, Whit Sundays or the, or the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you might know it as uh, if you're from overseas. Um, we went up there for a rally and um, that event was friggin' awesome. Uh, we had, first stage was like in um, cane, sugar cane fields. Uh, so standing on the side of the road with cars screaming past me filming them properly getting all the good angles and everything uh then from there we actually got to drive through a live stage and we actually we we had no speed limit so we could drive through the stage at a full full pelt um of course i i didn't take that opportunity because i was in a, a, a little um, mazda 2 and it just yeah it doesn't work very well off-road so we didn't go fast we went slow um relatively speaking compared to a rally car um we went through we did the filming there but the best part of that trip is we got to go to Bowen um, and they closed down the whole main street of this town um, and basically where I'd set up you had a barrier there um, I was behind the barrier and you could actually look over the barrier with the camera so the barrier was about chest height or actually just a fraction below chest height it was high enough to stop a car um, or at least slow them down so I was able to stand behind the barrier shooting forward um, and basically the car would come directly at me uh, they probably hit about 110, 120. Uh, then they had to slam on the brakes and then turn a 90 right, so 90 degree angle on a right hand corner. Um, and this is of course on a public street, so it's not on a gravel stage where these cars are actually set up for gravel. So they had to kind of really work the car to get it around the corner because it just, it's amazing how a, a gravel rally car can't handle tarmac very well. Um, that, was, that was quite interesting. So they, coming screaming at me um and they would have been like 
maybe a meter away from where I was eventually standing. Like it was real close where I could get because of that barrier. Um, awesome shots I got of the cars. There's one guy that just started doing donuts in front of me um, with the camera. So I'm watching him with the camera as he's doing the donuts. And behind him's like this awesome hotel. Um, that was unreal. Uh, that that was that was probably the highlight of the event. So yeah, that that was oh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, that was that was some of the rally experiences. So, I guess for you guys in a practical sense, um, if you want to get into that stuff, it's just show up, just start doing it. If I can give you any life advice, it's the Nike thing. Just do it. You work hard enough, you work long enough. Someone's going to notice. It all happens. It's happened to me. Um, the TechFerb channel. I mean, to be honest, this is probably by no means the best tech channel on the internet, um, but. I've worked hard and you know I've got 2.2 2.3 whatever however many thousand subscribers it is um, it's grown I remember when I hit my first hundred subscribers I was stoked on it I look back at that now and go wow I, I get that in like a month now <laughs> it's so different um, and the, the battle to get to oh we should talk about that actually the battle to get to a thousand subscribers in YouTube land um, that is the hardest, everyone says it, but now that I've done it, I understand it. It's the hardest thousand subscribers you will get. The first thousand, I worked hard. The content wasn't great in the, in the beginning, but the content got better and better and better over time. And the subscriber count, it got to the point where the subscriber count wasn't matching the content I was putting out. Like it was worthy of having a couple of thousand subscribers at that point, you know, in my opinion, of course, obviously biased. Um, but from what people were telling me as well, they're like, you know, you should have more subscribers. And I was like, yeah, but that's not how it works. I don't just make content and they show up. Um, so that first thousand was sort of clawing and, and getting there. And then it was when I had the algorithm pick up a video. That was when it all clicked for me. Um, the first video that for the YouTube algorithm to really pick up, of all things, was like the fifth video I made on a, a Core 2 Quad Q6600. Um, can it still game in 2017? That was three years ago now, man. Um, algorithm picked up that video and it just kept getting pushed out to the masses. I'm pretty sure it's up to like 60, 70,000 views now. It's, it's done really well. Um, I got a lot of subscribers from that video. If you're watching this channel, you may have subscribed from that video potentially. Um, then I had another couple of ones. I found i5 videos popped really well. i7 videos popped really well. Um, but of all things, the video that has just friggin absolutely grabbed the channel and pumped it into the algorithm was my video of Oiktenak getting his car serviced. And the amount of effort that I put into that video, I can promise you, it was not a lot. I showed up to the... Up, basically, we were down in um, the WRC Coffs Harbour 2018 event. Um, we come back from the stages, so we driven like we drove 70 k's back in from out in the forest, wherever we were. I forget where the stages were. We came back in, and we went to the service park. And um, what they do at night time is on the Saturday night they've got a massive service on the cars. Um, so we came in, we set up our cameras. Uh, well, sorry, I came in and I set up my camera right in front of where Oitanak's garage was. He wasn't back yet. So I was the first one standing there. I stood there for like an hour and a half. Didn't do anything. I just had to stand there with my camera in the right spot. And eventually when they came in, I filmed it. It was like a 45 minute video. That video has, I haven't checked it in a while, but I'm pretty sure it's like 300 or 400,000 views on it now. How? I don't understand how YouTube works that way. I put no effort into that video. It just friggin' took off. Um, and because that's now going gangbusters, I'm getting people watching my, subscribing to my channel with my other videos. My other videos are getting pushed. Yeah, it's, YouTube is a mistress that I don't understand. I don't think anyone understands that mistress. Um, but yeah, that's, man, that's where the channels come from. That's, that's how it's been. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's where we are at now. So for this show, what I want you guys to do, if you're in the live chat, pop in some suggestions of what you want to see in this show. Um, if you're watching this as an archive, leave a comment on the video um, and I'll be sure to check it um, well, I'll, to the best of my ability. I'll try and keep an eye on this video just for comments. 
Um, because I want to know what content you guys want me to make uh, for the show. I've got a, a bit of content that I want to do. Now that I've done one, I've sort of got a lot of ideas buzzing in the head. Um, but, yeah, the reality is... Um, this has been an hour of me rambling about all my stories and adventures on YouTube and in the last year. So, um, I hope those of you that are watching have enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't, you thought I've just rambled on too much. That's fine. I kind of have. Um, but yeah, let's let's do something awesome with this show. I, I I just want it to be an outlet for for me. Um, you know, it's I love tech. I think about it quite often it's it's aside from rallying it's it's my main hobby um it's a hobby that i can afford to do i can't afford to do rallying very easily it's very expensive i'm gonna try to do it but um yeah it's, it's hard uh, it's a lot of money but um that's besides the point um i want the show to be talking about the tech news i might do some builds um I'm, because this is a time slot it's not necessarily uh it, this is the standard format this is going to follow Sometimes you might show up, watch this stream, and I'll be building a computer. Um, might be building a water cooled computer. I might have a time challenge. Who knows? Um, yeah, let's 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 have some fun with it because um, live streams are just friggin' awesome. Um, and I've wanted to do one for ages. And you know what? I'm just going to do it. And if people watch it, they watch it. If they don't, that's fine. I'm making content and I'm enjoying it. And that's what this channel is all about. This is not a channel for profit. I, I don't make a living off this channel. Um, the YouTube ad money, like, if what, it might pay for a graphics card in a year. <laughs> it's, it's not a lot. Um, so there's not a lot of revenue from it. The channel's at the point now where maybe it pays for itself. You know, all the, all the bits and pieces that I have to buy or whatever. I don't think I've actually broke even, but that's not why I started the channel. Um, this is a passion project. I love it. I enjoy it. I'm going to keep making videos that I want to make. Um, I'm going to keep making videos that are hopefully entertaining, um, hopefully informative. Um, and yeah, that's sort of the general gist of it, guys. So for those of you who showed up, watched the live stream, thank you. Um, I will be back again next month. Uh, it will be on the first day of the month, first Thursday of the month. It'll be a lot more organized than this stream. Um, we're gonna be looking at, it looks like the 2nd of April. So we'll be back on the 2nd of April um, with another live stream. Um, I will have actually just capped off a rally um, on the weekend before, so I'm gonna be pr pretty tired from that. But um, I'm doing that live stream every first Thursday of the month. Um, and we'll see what we do. Um, oh, one more thing I might mention. Um, I am gonna start trying to do a game stream every second week. I've got allocated uh, every second Tuesday to do a game stream. Um, by no means feel obligated, not that you are obligated. Um, you know, that's more of a show up, ask me questions, hang out. Um, it's just a chill out session for me to play games and I find that that helps. Um, yeah, that helps having that time allocated for it. So yeah, my voice is dry. Um, I need some water, probably some coffee. So I guess guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.